episode one of Show and Tell. I'm Billy, and in this series, I'm going to be showing you vintage and vintage inspired hand knit garments. I'm also going to be showing you how to accessorize with vintage jewelry. I happen to have a quite substantial collection of costume jewelry, authentic jewelry, hats, handbags, uh, many of them are vintage. And in coming episodes, I'll be sharing a lot of them with you. Um, occasionally, we're going to peek into the closets of some other knitters other than myself, and I'll be bringing guests on. And I know that a lot of people out there in maker land have stuff in the back of their closets from 20, 30, maybe even 40 years ago. I have some things that are over 60 years old that I'm going to be sharing. Um, not made by me. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to want you to go in the back of your closet, go into your archives, and pull out those things and share them with us. From time to time, I'll also be doing a tutorial. Not too much, because I know there's so much good stuff out there. But I am going to show you how to knit with sequins at some point. Um, I don't think anybody else has done that. And it's a little bit different than knitting with beads. Um, in the meantime, I hope that you'll comment below Tell me if there are specific things that you'd like me to talk about. But I wanted to say, um, in keeping with the Hollywood theme, I stayed in the right color palette. I'm doing a whites and shades of gray for you. Um, I wanted to just show you my monogram. I'll talk about the sweater later on in the episode. But I must say, living in Manhattan, I sometimes feel like I'm in the Woody Allen film, Manhattan, because my world tends to be a very black and white world. I love that aesthetic. I live in the ninth floor of a high-rise building in an apartment, and I, I have to say that some of you out there could fit my entire apartment into your kitchen. So as a result, I don't do a lot of cooking, I don't garden, and I don't do stash. I just don't have the luxury of the space. I mean, I see some of these other podcasters. They've got bookcases and cubbies, and they've got yarn in every color and every stripe of the rainbow. I, I can't do it. I buy yarn, typically, before I'm ready to start a project. And it's also not my style. I'm somewhat of a minimalist, as you'll start to see once you get to know my work. However, I went to my first Vogue Knitting Live this past January before the lockdown. And it's a good thing because I was able to purchase a sweater's quantity of yarn from one vendor and a coat's quantity of yarn for another vendor. So I've been a busy little girl during this lockdown. So my knitting story, where did it all begin? These are the first needles I ever knit with. I was four years old. When my mother put yarn and these needles in my hand and said, let's keep those little hands busy, and she taught me how to knit. And all I knit were four inch squares in whatever color she happened upon. Different weight yarns, they were worsted, but there was a little variation. And I just kept knitting these squares, hoping that someday I would be assembling them into an afghan. Well, when I was old enough to sew them together, it wasn't very pretty. So that afghan really never saw the light of day. A little later on, one of my mother's very dear friends got a hold of me, and she saw how I was knitting. I was a thrower. That's how you teach a, a child, typically, to knit. And she said to me, Billy, you're knitting like an old lady. Let me teach you the new, modern, faster way to knit. Today, we know that as continental. And for those of you who aren't continental knitters, I, I mean no offense, but it is fortuitous to be able to use both hands, especially if you're doing color work. So thank you, Ann Sylvia. Aunt Sylvia, I'm, I'm glad that you taught me early on. It's so much easier when you're five. 
Another big influence in my knitting life was my mother's older sister who had a very untimely death in her early 40s. She was the most amazing knitter uh, of anyone I've ever seen. And I am fortunate to have some of her garments and in coming episodes I will pull them out and I will share them with you. One of them is loaded, loaded with sequins, and that's why I'll, that's when I'll do the sequin tutorial. So after my little childhood of knitting, I took a pretty long hiatus. I was a serious student. I went to an academic high school from which I went on to engineering school and earned a master's degree in engineering. I really didn't have time to knit. And it wasn't until I was in my 20s and I left my engineering career to start a business of my own that I encountered a friend of my mother's. My mother sent me on an errand at the beach to a friend's house. And when I entered his apartment, there he was, kicked back on his sofa, feet up, <laughs> knitting. And I said, Ronnie, what are you knitting? I'm knitting a sweater. I had never knit a sweater. I learned to knit when I was a kid. And I thought to myself, if he can do it, I should be able to do it. So when I got home from the beach, I went to the closest yarn shop and I said, hook me up. I need instructions and I really need like, a, like somebody who will just be a little mentor for me until I get my feedback on the ground because I haven't knit for many, many years, decades. Well, it came right back. And I knit for quite a while. I will be showing you some of those things in weeks and months to come. Then, let's see, uh, I took another hiatus because I got married and had a child and raising my child really didn't afford me the time to do much knitting. So, Another quarter of a century goes by, and I find myself now retired. My son is grown. By the way, he's also an engineer, I'm proud to say. And I had the time on my hands, so again, I went into a local yarn shop. Not the original one. That one was long gone. And I wasn't sure that this time I was really going to remember. But you know what? I put the needles in my hand, and... I started to cast on, it was coming back. Once I started knitting, stocking that back and forth, it only took me about five or 10 minutes and I felt like I was up to speed. It's kind of like driving a car. You know, if you haven't been behind the wheel of a car for five or even 10 years, it's no problem. You have that muscle memory, especially with knitting. But I didn't, I didn't know that. And in my case, it turned out that the third time was the charm, I'm happy to say. What's maybe a little less happy is that this time I'm a lunatic about it. I can't stop. All I want to do, especially now with this pandemic and being locked in our apartment, all I want to do every day is knit, knit, knit. Good thing I got that yarn at VKL. So I had mentioned that I, I had a, a business. I had um, started an importing business so I'd be able to travel a lot, which is my really big passion, even more than knitting. And I was importing costume jewelry from Paris and Milan, or as my suppliers would say, bijou fantasy, or if I was in Italy, bijouterie fantasy. <laughs> and I had some really good years and a lot of fun doing that. But Again, that was before my child was born, so um, I've had all these years to accumulate quite a nice collection of jewelry, and in those years I've lost my mother, I've lost a couple of grandmothers, and being an only child, I got a lot of the jewelry. So, um, it happens that the earrings that I'm wearing are not inherited, but something that I picked up at an antiques fair. Um, if you're a real vintage jewelry aficionado, you might think that these are Miriam Haskell. They have that kind of flavor to them. But they're very white for a very white sweater. So let's talk about the sweater a little bit. 
It is called Charisse, as in Sid Charisse, the Hollywood film star of the 1940s and 50s. It's by Jennifer Wood. And again, I embellished it with my monogram. It's got little pearl sphere buttons. I really wanted round buttons for some reason, and they sent me the wrong buttons. They were half spheres, and I said, no, no, I ordered the sphere. So the button company was very, very nice. They didn't even ask me to send the wrong ones back, uh, and they just sent out the proper ones. So there's some eyelet, there's some pearl bumps, and um, let's see, it's a rounded yoke, top-down construction, and it's all worked in one piece. I use number five needles, and the yarn is cotton by Yarn Art Jeans. Oh, there's also, I forgot, Pico Edge. Now, interestingly, there's only eight ravelers, I think including myself, who have knit this particular sweater, which surprises me because it's sweet. It's very sweet. So I forgot to mention to you, I'm the kind of person who goes into the yarn shop with a handbag or a scarf and I say, I want to pick up the colors in my accessory to build my wardrobe around that. And I start looking at the yarns, and invariably I have a hard time finding just the right shade, just the right hue. They think I'm nuts. But if you're making something for yourself to blend in with your wardrobe, I think we all probably would say, like, we want what we want. And sometimes it has to be special order. Sometimes you just have to keep looking. And this is easy white. It's not always so easy for me. Okay, the other white sweater that I'm going to show you today is by Amy Chris Christopher's, Christopher's. It's called the Neil Jacket. And let me see if I back up, if you can see the full length of it. It's got a little cuff sleeve. A lot of seed stitch and a chevron design. The whole back is chevron as well. And one of the little tricks that I learned from my Aunt Matilda was this hem. The pattern didn't call for a hem. The pattern just was seed stitch to the bottom. When I knit my swatch, the fabric seemed okay, but once I started knitting and I held it around my hips, it seemed really noodly. I didn't like it. So I went down a needle size and I added this hem that I turned under, and it really gave it a nice, a nice finishing touch on the bottom. I like much more how it hangs now. Now, I want to call your attention to the buttons because you already know something about me that I'm a vintage freak. So I searched around until I found vintage Mother of Pearl buttons, and each button is a little different. I thought that made it interesting. Now, with this sweater, because of the chevrons, I would accessorize with this earring. These are French Art Deco style. Not authentic Art Deco, but made with original molds from the period. But I also have this white sweater, huge headlamp Swarovski crystal. And I also have these. So, you know, I always have options in my closet. Um, these are made of rubber. These are from Paris. Circa 1983. Um, oh, this is Knit Picks Comfy Worsted, knit on size six needles, by the way. Okay, so that's my 
first episode. There's going to be a lot more fun in store. Um, if you like this, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up just down below. Please subscribe so you'll be notified next time I pop an episode up there. And I really wanted to say I hope you've enjoyed meeting me and I look forward to getting to know all of you. And uh, I hope we'll be taking a, a lovely walk back in time together and we'll be revisiting some golden oldies by the way, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Billy Toy, and hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to put that here. Okay, see you next time.